Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks with TalkToProfit.com and today I want to talk to you about how there's infinite possibilities in your mouth. You know, when you choose to speak words, you are sending out a vibration into the universe, decreeing a thing, and you'll see it be established unto you. Now that's a good thing if you're doing the right things and focusing on the right thoughts, but if you do like most people who have an uncontrolled thought life, they're undisciplined in their minds, they are speaking a lot of things that they don't want. They're repeating stories they've been told that they don't really want that issue to go on. They're talking negatively about people, not realizing that that speech is bringing back those same negative results that they're talking about the other people having. There is so much power in your words, and this is so overlooked today by Christians. Many will flat out deny it and say, oh, that's just New Age stuff. And they, they think that they just ascribe a term to something, demonize it, and immediately it makes it not true. But they have no valid argument because the scripture is replete with plain text saying about the power of our words. From the Old Testament and the New Testament, it's all over the place. You look even in the very beginning of our existence with Adam and Eve, and we see, what did Adam do? What was his first main job? He was there to keep the garden, of course. But what was the first main big task he had? It was naming the animals, speaking forth those decrees over those animals, what they would be, what they would be called. You know, your name has a lot of importance to it. In older times, people understood this. They named their children names that had valid meanings, that had importance. You know, my name, Ryan, means kingly. And yet there's people today naming their daughters Ryan. There's no thought, no rhyme, no reason to it at all. But a name has importance to it because it is something people decree. When I say I am Ryan, I'm saying I am kingly. But what if somebody's named some name that means something evil? Do you want to be speaking for that for the rest of your life? Do you want your child to speak for some, a decree, a negative decree about themselves each and every day? But that's not even the most important thing. Names are important, but the reality is that the names are a small little part of what's going on. In most people's lives, the biggest thing is the fact that their thought lives are not disciplined. They haven't taken control of their minds. They fill their minds, they fill their hearts with things that are impure. And I'm not talking about filth and profanity and all that kind of stuff. People immediately go to that. There's a whole bunch of steps before that that is still bad. A lot of the professing Christian media is bad. It's filled with negativity, it's filled with anger, it's filled with political nonsense and drivel. It's all caught up in the world and it has nothing to do with God and nothing to do with honoring God with one's life. Our words should be as the oracles of God. When we speak, people should hear things that are valid, that are important, that have value to them. What are you doing talking about the weather and talking about sports scores and talking about politics and talking about this drama and this news and these celebrities and who cares? Shouldn't your thoughts and your speech be about things that are valuable? Shouldn't it be about things that are good and important and edifying and uplifting to those who would hear them? Do you want to be that person that leaves people feeling angry or sad or worried or whatever, anxious about the world? Or do you want them to leave your presence feeling better, feeling that things aren't like the world portrays it? That things can be better if I choose a different path. Listen, yes, the world has a certain way of doing things. And if you choose to believe like the world believes, you're going to get the same results. Easy. But that's not what you want. You can speak forth your life to be one of riches, to be one of abundance, to be one of health, to be one of love, to be one of peace, to be one of righteousness, or... You could speak the negativity of the world and get the opposite of all that. 
Now, unfortunately, that's what the vast majority of people choose that latter thing. Oh, they may have some areas of their life that are all right. Maybe they're doing all right financially. They're not rich, but they're doing all right. But they're on their third or fourth divorce. They're sick. They're fat. They're all these problems. Their kids rebel from them and are living like the devil. But, oh, things are supposedly right with them. But they spent years and years and years and years practicing speaking negativity, speaking the things that don't, don't want, speaking into existence, decreeing all these things that they're now experiencing. You know, you go talk about your, your neighbor's son, how they're rebelling and they're acting like the devil. You go tell other people about that. You don't think you're going to reap some consequences from that later on in your life, maybe in your own children's lives. They hear that stuff. They hear you talking about it. And then you give them the prime opportunity to rebel against you doing the same thing because you spoke that into existence. You didn't show them the right way if you chose to behave like that. This affects so many areas of your life. You have to speak words that are edifying. You have to know that in your words, there is the power of death and life. Speak life, speak blessing, speak liberty, speak freedom, speak health, speak wealth, speak those good things. Don't speak about the world. Don't talk up its negativity and the things it wants you to believe in. You are literally a transceiver means you receive vibrations and you send vibrations. If you're sending negativity, what else are you going to expect to receive back except negativity? And that shouldn't be your life. No one really wants that for their lives. And yet they don't do the things because oftentimes it's a little harder to be disciplined and control your tongue. I get that. But the alternative is living like everyone else. The alternative is living average, living mediocre. I would much rather put the hard work in, disciplined effort in, to controlling my tongue, speaking those things that I want, speaking things that are lovely and of good report, than to maybe have a little easier time, at least speech-wise, but have a tremendously worse time in life, in every other area of life, because those words that are being spoken are not good. They're not uplifting. They're not positive. Jesus said very plainly, if you believe something and you don't doubt in your heart, you will receive whatsoever you say. That, my friends, is powerful. So really examine your words. These things you're saying, is that what you want to receive? Understand, if you're talking about somebody else negatively, just whatever negative things you're talking about them, do you want to receive that in your life? Because if you don't, don't say it. If you talk about somebody else when they're not present, even if they are present, but especially if they're not present, it should be good. It should be kind things, things they would love to hear that you said about them. Ideally, you shouldn't be talking about people when they're not there anyway. But if, what if for whatever reason, somebody starts bringing somebody up, and maybe your default mode is to say, well, yeah, they do that. Or just agree with the person's negativity. Redirect it to something positive. Speak positive things about that person. Whatever you can find. Or just redirect the conversation to something else completely and get it off that person totally. And make sure your mind is one that is renewed and thinking and speaking and believing for good things only. For yourself and for others. Speak good words for other people. Decree affirmations for other people. If you have a coworker who's given you trouble, decree good things for them, for peace, for righteousness, for happiness, for love in their lives. Instead of complaining and murmuring about them, decree good things for them. Never let another word go out of your mouth that's negative about that person. And don't let another word go out of your mouth that's negative about yourself either. Speak things that are good about yourself and about everyone else. And look to God for his goodness. And believe in his goodness. And speak his goodness. And experience his goodness more and more each day. My friend, you have an infinite power available to you in your words. Use them wisely. 
I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.